FOG Andrew here from the family of gamers. Welcome, War Gamers, to an exciting, awesome, unmatched video. Today, we are going to be reviewing Battle of Legends Volume 2 from the Unmatched board game. I love this game so much. I have been super excited for this box, and it finally has come in. We're going to be taking a look at the characters and everything that comes in the box. But before we do, if this is your first time here, why don't you consider subscribing to the channel for more videos like this. I got a lot of other unmatched videos planned, so stay tuned for that, and also check out our other videos that we have on the channel. But without further ado, let's get to it. All right, so here is the box. Let us open it. You get your of course, unmatched rule book, which actually has new rules for a free-for-all mode, if you want to do that. Also, your rules for team play, and the special rules for this set and the board, and of course, you know, your standard rules for the game. You get a double-sided board, the Hanging Gardens. Now, the thing is with this board is that one side is the Hanging Gardens and the other side is the, well, Hanging Gardens, which I don't like because I would much rather have two different boards to play on with special things about this board. One side has the circles for the zones filled in, but then on the other side, more of the artwork is shown, so it's only on the rings of the circles. Now, the thing with this board is that if you are elevated on top of cer certain areas, you actually get plus one to your attacks, and that's all around the board, which is a cool little uh, change up. It's not just a standard board, it actually has a special ability, which is nice. Now, the four characters you get in here are Sun Wukong, Yenenga, Achilles, and Bloody Mary, they all have designated spots for their cards and for their ability cards and for their health dials as well. All very nice. If you saw my Battle of Legends Volume 1 video, you know how much I love how Unmatched organizes all of their characters. You got your models on the top, you got your cards on the bottom with their names engraved or put into the plastic. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So we're going to be taking a look at Sun Wukong first. As you can see there, his, his model looks very, very sweet. Now his special ability is that at the start of his turn, he can take one damage, which he has 17 health, to summon a clone in an empty space adjacent to Sun Wukong. So he does not start with his sidekicks on the board. He actually brings them in by taking a damage. So it's a little interesting of a concept. He has sidekicks but doesn't start with them and you can get them back by just taking a damage and summoning them. Now of course he's melee, moves two spaces. And he has some interesting cards in his deck, but one of the interesting things that comes in the Battle of Legends Volume 2 box is bonus attack. So essentially, uh, you play this card, it is zero health, or it's zero attack, and if your opponent played a defense card, you can do a second attack for free, which does four damage. So all of the characters in this box have this type of bonus attack thing, but for Sun Wukong specifically, he basically tricks the opponent maybe into playing a high value card and then has to try to defend against a four valued damage card. So you basically get two attacks for the price of one when for the price of one card while your opponent has to spend two cards. So it's an interesting concept that is in just this box. Now he actually has Bewilderment, which also uh, Merlin has from King Arthur's deck. He also has Golden Chainmail, which is any combat damage you would take is dealt to the opposing fighter instead, which is an interesting card. Now, some of the cards that other cards he has are different forms, because I believe Sun Wukong can change into a bunch of different animals and such. So, for example, Tortoise Form is a 5 defense card, but your opponent can boost their attack. Ox Form is a 7 damage attack, but the card's effects can't be cancelled, and your opponent, if they played a card, can boost it. 
And then he's got Phoenix Form, which is Sun Wukong recovers one health for each clone on the board, so you could actually gain three health back from your um, from your clones. Now, he only has one Phoenix Form and two of each Ox Form and Tortoise Form in his deck, but he can actually get back his forms by playing 72 Transformations, which is a two Versatile card, and you can take Ox Form, Tortoise Form, or Phoenix Form from your discard pile and return it to your hand. He has three of these in his deck, so it's an easy way to get those cards back if you use them. And that's Sun Wukong, in a nutshell. Next up is Yenenga. She is an archer. She seems pretty cool, nice model. Now, her whole thing is, is that she is ranged, of course, because she's an archer. She starts off with 15 health, and she has two archer sidekicks that are also ranged. Now, the interesting about, thing about the archers are that the tokens have a two on it. So they actually have two health each. Now, usually multiple sidekicks means that you have only one health each for the sidekick but when they take a damage you flip it over to the other side and she has two archers now it's a very interesting concept with multiple sidekicks that have not just one health each i think it's an interesting thing for yunenga and the archers are actually not too bad either they have an interesting card, Divide and Conquer, which is a two versatile card. If your fighter is not in Yenenga's, Yenenga's zone, the value of this card is four instead. So you kind of want to split up, but also keep together the archers, because her ability is that if Yenenga would take damage, you may assign any amount of that damage to one or more of your archers in her zone instead, and you may not assign more damage to an archer than their remaining health. So if Yenenga would take damage, and this archer is in her zone, well guess what? You can take out the archer instead of giving damage to Yenenga. So it's an interesting concept that you want to keep your archers close to you in your zone, but you also want to keep them away for your divide and conquer attack. Now, she does have abilities like Surprise Volley, which is a three attack card. Now, this could be used for anybody. You may immediately return a defeated archer to a space in the opposing fighter's zone, and if you do, that archer is now the attacker. But if you don't, you can gain an action. So this is an easy way to either gain an action or return an archer to your space. There's also, Yenenga has an attack called Jaws of the Beast, which is for each zone the opposing fighter is in, increase the value of this card by plus one. That is insane because on the Hanging Gardens, if they're here, they would take an additional three damage. That is six damage altogether, depending on what they block with. So I think that's a crazy, crazy thing. Yenenga also has uh, a three attack, Reign of Arrows attack. And after combat, you can volley, which is another three attack, attack. Saying attack a lot of times. But that's crazy. Again, another bonus attack thing that Yenenga can do. She also has a defense card, shield formation. Immediately your opponent may discard a card if they don't return a defeated archer to a space in Yenenga's zone. So it's an easy way. There's easy ways to get your archers back if you assign the damage to them and take them out. She also has some scheme cards. For example, one with the land. Move each of your fighters up to two spaces. Each of your fighters recover one health and draw a card. That's a crazy scheme card right there. Healing, drawing cards, and moving two spaces. She also has Master of the Hunt, which lets you gain two actions. Uh, yeah, enough said. So I think she's an interesting character to play, especially with her archers. I have definitely played against her and with her, and I think that she is one of the more powerful characters in Unmatched, just because of her being ranged, her ability, and her ability to gain actions and get her archers back almost right away, so I think she's a pretty good character. Next up is Achilles, and he's got a pretty sweet model here. He also comes with his brother-in-arms, Patroclus, I just call him Pat for short. They're both melee. Achilles starts with a whopping 18 health 
and Patroclus starts off with six health. Now, Achilles' ability focuses more on if Patroclus dies, which is if Patroclus is defeated, discard two random cards, and while he is defeated, you add plus two to all the values of Achilles' attacks, and if Achilles wins, com Achilles wins combat, you draw a card. Obviously, they move two. So you basically, it, it, it's a weird thing. You want Patroclus to die, and there's actually ways to do that in Achilles' deck, for example, the Day of Your Doom, which is a 3 attack 4 Pat, you may deal 2 damage to Pat, and if you do, the value of this card is 5 instead. So there you go, you can deal 2 damage to Pat. Under Achilles' helm, immediately, if Pat is not defeated, Achilles may swap spaces with him, and if he does, Pat is now the defender. So that's a way to swap spaces and have Pat take the damage instead. Next up is Battle Frenzy. Deal 2 damage to both fighters in the combat. That is a 3 value Pat card. So there are interesting ways to basically give damage to Pat. He also has a Test for Weakness card, which you do 1 damage, but then you do a bonus attack of 3. So that's an interesting bonus attack card. He's got his Spear Throw, which you deal 2 damage to an opposing fighter in Achilles' zone. That is a Scheme card. And of course, he has his Achilles' Heal, which is after combat. If you lost the combat, your opponent gains 1 action, but this is a 4 value card, so there's a little bit of weak... It's a good defense, but a little bit of weakness there for Achilles. I think he's interesting because you want to try to kill your sidekick, and there's ways in the deck to do that so you kind of want to use him as a meat shield and I like that there are ways to actually take out Pat because you're a, if your opponent knows that you want to take out Pat then they're not going to go after him but that also makes Pat annoying for your opponent so it's kind of an interesting concept for you and your opponent by using Achilles and by using Pat I think it's interesting let's move on to the last character Next up is probably my personal favorite in this box, Bloody Mary. I love that model so much. Oh, it's just way too cool. Oh, I love it. So, Bloody Mary, obviously she is a melee fighter. She moves three, and at the start of your turn, if you have exactly three cards in hand, gain one action. So, she moves three. If she has three cards in her hand, she gets three actions. Alright, now she starts off with 16 health, and she has interesting stuff that play with the whole three things and third action. For example, her attacks that she has, like for example, speak three times, if this is your third action this turn, the value of this card is seven instead. That's insane. Uh, this is a one value attack, but you may boost the attack if you want. And if this is your third action, recover three health. And then her bonus attack for the deck is three damage. But then after combat, she has a bloody reprise, which is if your opponent played a card against bloody requiem, this attack's value is that card's printed value. So that's an interesting bonus card. She also has Jump Scare, which is if Bloody Mary shares no zones with the space she started in this turn, this card's value is 6 instead. So it's essentially a slightly better momentous shift where you have to share no or have no zones that you started in, which isn't that hard because, you know, she moves 3. She even has Broken Glass. You may increase or decrease the card of this, the value of this card by 1. But why would you want to decrease or, I mean, it might be better to increase it, but that's because if the value of this card matches your opponent's card, draw one card and the opposing fighter takes two damage. All right. She has an interesting defense card, which is the value of this card is equal to the printed value of your opponent's. All right. And then stolen memories, look at an opponent's hand and choose a card. Your opponent may discard it. If they don't, they're, they take damage equal to its boost value. This is my favorite character in the box, definitely. She has a lot of interesting stuff. She's by herself, has 16 health. It, it, it's so fun to play, just trying to get that third action and saving cards in your hand to actually 
get the third action going and the, the cards so that you get your health back or deal damage or do stuff like that. It's very fun to play her. Definitely my favorite character in the box. So overall, what do I think of Battle of Legends Volume 2? I think this is a fantastic box and a great follow-up to Battle of Legends Volume 1 and just a great box for Unmatched in general. All four characters are unique in their own ways of how you have to play them and what you have to do with them, especially Bloody Mary with the third action, killing Pat with Achilles, having your archers close by but not really with Yenenga, and spawning in clones whenever you want with Sun Wukong but not enough where you want to take a lot of damage because you take damage when spawning in clones. It's a great box. If you don't or haven't played Unmatched, I would definitely recommend picking this one up or Battle of Legends Volume 1 to start your Unmatched collection or just to see if you even like the game, which I love this game. I definitely recommend it if you haven't played this game already, so definitely check out this box. But if you have the Battle of Legends Volume 2 box, let me know what you think down in the comments below and we, we could have a discussion in there. Check out the Discord, Patreon, all that good stuff. Now the algorithm says that you need to watch this video that's right here somewhere on the screen and subscribe to the channel. Check out the Patreon. Check out all that good stuff in the description. Guys, I'll see you in the next one.